up and welcome to a confident club, Copper. Hello, everybody. Hi, Steve. What what chapter we got to oh, in this here book right. now? Then? Well, the last chapter was so important. We're yeah. still on it. Oh, okay. Um, we were talking about. Um, it's called. Wait a minute. What's my page? Don't control your moods. Oh, okay. And we were talking about state control. And yes. The, the two main ways of changing how you feel was your fizzy and yeah. your focus. So in here you've put. Yes. By focusing on what you don't want rather than what you do want, you are doing an excellent job of confirming to yourself why you don't deserve something. Now, I must say, Steve. Yes. Oh, when I first got into NLP and I started doing a lot of one-to-one coaching, yeah. I came across this time after time after time with my clients when I was doing the one-to-one stuff. They'd come in and we'd have a, you know, like an initial chat yeah. and they'd give me a list this long all the stuff they didn't want. And my job was to help them focus on what they did want instead. Yeah. Uh, NLP, talk about NLP. Mm. Neuro linguistic programming, for those people who don't know, um, you should never try to create a negative internal representation, whatever Ooh. that means, right? But again, the one we don't watch all the time, it's in the book. Um, and I've used it for the book, actually. The whole book is based on this principle when you say to a small child, don't drop the milk, right? And you focus what you what do they do? They drop the milk, right? So focus is if fizzy is what's going on in physical body, what's going on between your ears? And we're talking about rapidly being able to change your state or your mood to get into a more resourceful yeah. state to increase your performance. And yeah. all performance comes from the state you're in. It all starts there. So you can change your physic. Focus, how do you change your focus then? Well, it's about noticing, there's a few things, but one is to notice what you say to yourself when stuff hits the fan. Last week, yes. in the workshop that we did, without yes. naming any names, we had a couple of people who over and over, out loud... Yeah, never mind, they said their own head. Out loud, kept telling us what their limiting beliefs were. Yeah, what they couldn't do. What they couldn't rather do. Rather than what they could do. Yeah, yeah like memory and all that. I've got a lousy mm. memory, right? Um, so it starts with, first of all, noticing what you're doing in your head. Is it helpful? Is it injuring? Yeah. You know, is it putting me into a good resourceful state or an unresourceful state? Because most people don't even notice, right? Yeah, true. And my favourite one is Mr. Spock, right? You love Mr. Spock. I love Mr. You? Spock. And when I say Mr. Spock, I love the original, what I call it, the only Mr. Spock, really, because there was Mark, Mark II version in the sort of... Uh, the new Star Trek movies, but uh, Leonard Nimoy Leonard back in Nimoy. the day. Yeah. Really a Star Trek episode. Really authentic point it is. Yeah. Anyway, but the, be, the classic episode, they'd be getting attacked by the Klingons, quite painful, all falling about the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. Kirk's getting all emotional out there. But yeah. not Spock. Spock is what, in what I would call the Spock state, which is what we're talking about. And you just stand there like that, and whatever's going down, don't matter. I you remember know, watching it, yeah. Stuff it in the fan, and just go, how fascinating. <laughs> right. How fascinating. So one way of changing your, your, your focus is particularly when you're trying to say giving presentations is one, you know, yeah. stuff happens. And, and how fascinating, if you say how fascinating to yourself, it forces you to think about it in a different way. I think everybody's life and everybody's experience is often a direct result of the kind of questions they ask other people but particularly they ask themselves, yeah. like high quality questions. And this is when we talk about focus, many ways of thinking about what goes on in your head. And we may need another couple maybe to talk about another one, but yeah. just talk about the spot principle. Because if you get emotional like Kirk, you know, you step outside your comfort zone, it doesn't quite work out perhaps how you wanted it to. And first time you do anything, we've said this many times on previous covers, it's probably not gonna work out that way. You've never done it before, right? Most people beat themselves up and they ask a lousy question like, oh no, why do I always <laughs> In do that? In that voice yeah. as well. Oh yeah. no, why do I always do that? And then if you ask a lousy question like that, you're brilliant because you're an idiot, you're a fool. Whereas if you go, how fascinating, that's another way of saying, I'm going to get the learning from it. Yeah. I've just learned something, whatever happened, it's not irrelevant how I feel about it. Get the learning, put it into my next go and get into that virtual circle of improvement. Don't you think a lot of people as well, I was just thinking about the people last week, um, also don't think that they're responsible for what they say them to themselves. No. They think that's outside of the control. Yeah, well, more that in another cuppa, I think. Definitely, that, yeah. that voice, like we could do a whole cuppa on that, that voice in right, your head. Right, yeah. we'll do that next. But, but it does start with, yeah, back to taking personal responsibility. You have a choice and you can change your focus. So, think about that. Think yeah. about asking 
high quality questions and think about focusing on what you want instead of what you don't want. Yeah, how fascinating. I'll sit here. Bye.